So let's take a look at page 11. There are two types of probability, theoretical probability and experimental probability. First, we're going to look at theoretical probability. It's based on knowing and calculating all of the equally likely outcomes in an experiment. Meaning, it's what should happen. It's what you expect is going to happen. And when we're comparing our ratios, we're looking at the number of favorable outcomes compared to the number of possible outcomes. Now, when we're discussing experimental probability, that is based on actual repeated trials in an experiment. It's what actually happened. And when we set up our ratio, we're comparing the number of outcomes that occurred to the number of trials performed. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example of each. So, in theoretical probability, if you flip a coin, what is the theoretical probability that it will land on tails? The answer would be one half. The reason for this is because one side has tails and there's a total of two sides on the coin. So, if I flipped it 20 times, we could expect that it would land half of the time and half of 20 would be 10. So the answer would be 10 times because we expect it to land half of the time. But we know that just because what we expect to happen isn't always going to be what happens. So below are the results of choosing a card from a deck of five cards and then recording the suit and then replacing the card back, meaning I have a deck of cards, I picked a card, I saw what suit it was, and then I put it back. Now we have to make some slight adjustments because when I put this in here, I didn't align things correctly. So we have six hearts, we have 10 diamonds, we have seven clubs, and we have five spades. Sorry that it's a little bit off and misaligned. So we are asked, what's the probability that we would choose a diamond? Well, when we look at this, there are 10 diamonds total that we chose. And we want to know out of how many. So we would have to add 6 plus 10 plus 7 plus 5 to know how many total times did we choose a card. And the answer is 28. So therefore, the probability of choosing a diamond is 10 out of 28, which can be simplified to 5 over 14. So now here are two examples. We want to know, is it an example of theoretical probability, meaning what should happen, or experimental probability, what did happen? The first one says, I rolled the die 30 times and it landed with a six face up 10 of those times. Well, this is experimental probability. We rolled that number cube, we rolled that die 30 times and we got six heads. That's exactly what happened. The second one says there are 16 airheads in the bag. Four of them are cherry, seven are orange, five are apple. The probability of picking a cherry is one-fourth. Well, there's four cherry out of the 16 total, which is one-fourth. 
This is theoretical probability because we think we'll get it one fourth of the time. However, we probably won't because in probability, what should happen and what does happen are two different things. Now we're going to conduct an experiment. If you want to do your own, that's fine, but I went ahead and I conducted the experiment. So I took a number cube and I rolled it 20 times. I got the number one five times. I got the number two two times. I got the number three three times. I got the number four two times. I got the number five two times. And I got the number six six times. So now we can use this information to help us compare the theoretical and experimental probabilities in three different situations. So first we're asked, what is the probability of a four? P parentheses four parentheses says, what's the probability? Well, the theoretical probability is gonna be one out of six because one side out of six is a four or one number out of six is a four. For us, when we look, we notice that we have two times that we got a number four out of 20. Well, we can simplify this to one tenth. And when we look at it, we say, well, they're kind of close, but they're not exact. For even numbers, we know that our even numbers are two, four, and six. So when we look at it, that's three out of six numbers that are even, which is half of them. When we look at our experimental probabilities, we have two number twos, two number fours, and six number sixes. That's 10 numbers that were even out of the 20 that were rolled. So we have 10 out of 20, which does equal one half. So in this case, they were more than just close, they were exactly the same. For the third one, the factor of three, we have to know that factors of three are one and three. So when we look at it, that's two out of the six numbers are factors of three, which is one third. The experimental probability was we got the number one five times and the number three three times. So we got them eight times out of 20, which we know that we can simplify to two fifths. Again, we're close, but we are not the same. So now we have to use our experiment to answer the questions. Were our probabilities the same or different, and why do you think so? So when we looked at it, for one of them it was the same, but most of them were different. And the reason is, What should happen isn't going to be what actually happens. So now we're asked to find the theoretical probability for the following events, meaning these are all the things that should happen, but we know they probably wouldn't. So the probability of choosing a jack from a standard deck of cards. There are four jacks out of 52 total, which can be simplified to one out of 13 because one out of every 13 cards will be a jack. We know that that's the four suits. The second one says, what's the probability of rolling a composite number on a fair number cube? Well, first you have to know that the word composite is going to be not prime, meaning we are looking at the numbers four and the number six, because those are the only two numbers on a number cube that you could get by multiplying two numbers other than one in itself. So that's two numbers out of six that are composite, which is a third of them. So in theory, we should get a composite number one-third of the time. 
The last one is, what's the probability of picking a vowel from the word mathematics? Well, first, you have to know that the vowels are going to be A, E, I, O, and U. We're not going to need to worry about Y because there isn't a Y in here. And when we count it up, we have an A, an E, another A, and an I. So that's four vowels out of 11 possible letters. So the probability of picking a vowel should be 4 out of 11, but we know it probably wouldn't happen. So the last question says, what is the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability? And the answer is theoretical probability is what should happen. Experimental probability is what did happen or what actually happened.